Welcome back to the channel, folks. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed, please do. It keeps the channel going and hit like on the videos so that YouTube populates it more so more people are shared and see it. Uh, today, we are going to start number two engine teardown. Uh, in the previous video, you've seen that the motor I picked up for $200 had new pistons, new oil pump, new push rod tubes, uh, really nice head so that I got the parts all off of that. Uh, engine number two is the one that came out of the running parts car that I had. Uh, however, I am going to put new pistons on, uh, polish the heads up, do a few things like that. Uh, and I think that's about it for this motor that I'm going to be tearing down. You'll watch me put it all together, of course, but I plan on building an engine over the winter or early spring next year because I would like to buy a brand new block and possibly go with an 88 millimeter big board kit with the nicer heads, the upgraded heads, and a 74 millimeter crank, which I'll clearance in the garage myself with my Dremel because you can do that with 74 millimeter. But you'll get to see all that. I got way ahead of myself. Uh, okay, we're going to do engine teardown today. And I'm going to show you how your thermostat should function, which I found out mine isn't. So I got some decisions to make there. But uh, let's get on it. Thanks. Board, I believe it's an AH. Rear U A H. Okay. Firing order's the same on all these. One, four, three, two. One, two, three, four. All right. As I stressed in my last video, leave the distributor in place, okay? Because when you're turning this engine around, you want that distributor to hold the gear down. You don't want to do it without the distributor in because turning it, the distributor gear starts to pop up, shears off the gear, Armageddon, you know, asteroid hits a planet. Okay, so this one was an auto stick. Now I did remove the flywheel from the torque converter already to bear you the pain of watching me pry it off because it was on there for a while. So <clears throat> a little PB blast, a little cleanup work, and it came off. So it wasn't fun. That one was stuck on there, and I have no idea why it was so horrifying. But I did take the back plate off already. The one that goes on the back of the motor, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. It was just a couple screws. Uh, I do have to change the oil pump, and I'll show you why. Since it was an auto stick, it's different, but it's behind the pulley, so I'll explain that when I'm done. One thing I want to test before I take this apart is the thermostat, the one that opens the flaps. When a car warms up, it expands or shrinks. Now I got it backwards in my brain, but it moves these levers okay, which opens the blades in the fan trap to blow air down to cool the heads. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, ask in the comments, but okay, let's test the thermostat. What you will need is a hairdryer. I have a heat gun, but really a hairdryer should be sufficient. I'm going to heat it up and see if it moves. If it don't, it's bad. Always try to get an original German one if possible. I know they sell aftermarket ones. I don't know how great they are, but I will find out before this video is completed. This is the thermostat right there. Now, when I put heat to this, it should expand and go up. You know, it'll spread like an accordion, which would open the vents. So this is gonna be a little noisy for a second, so let's see what it does. didn't do anything okay when I do remove it I'm gonna test it while it's not on the engine uh, just see if it needs cleaned up or something if this is not working replace it that is what controls the flaps in the fan trap to have the cool air come down and hit the heads uh, you got to take this apart first before we remove that fan trap though because there's a rod that comes down through let me explain there's a rod that comes down through and hooks to that 
okay, that hooks to the flaps inside the fan shroud, and I'll show you when I take it apart. So let's disconnect that first while it's, since it's out of the way. Okay, so on the thermostat, you have a bolt here and you have a bolt there. This bolt holds the bracket, that one holds the thermostat. So let me get a socket. Okay, 13 millimeter. I'm trying to stay out from blocking your view. There it is. Try to keep all your bolts organized so you know what goes to what. Okay. Let's take the bracket one off. This uh, bracket, and I'll show you right here, whoop, is adjustable. Can you see this slide on it right there? That's adjustable. So keep your nuts and bolts organized so you know what they go to. So I'll put those bolts and nuts with that bracket. Here's your thermostat, okay? You're going to unscrew it. It threads onto the rod. So just start turning. It'll loosen up and come off. It'll get there, it's threaded in pretty good. And I'm gonna test this off the vehicle too. I'm gonna try to clean it up a little. I don't know if that's possible, but it looks a little gummed up. More than likely, it probably has a leak in it somewhere, but it can't hurt to check it to see what it does. Never know. All right, first I'm gonna remove the intake. So what we are going to do first is loosen the bolts on the intake and then the screw for the boot to the intake. So let's do that. These are 13 millimeter. One. I'll take the extension off for that. screwdriver on these ones. Let's see how bad these are to get loose. Oh, okay. Not bad. I'm replacing these boots, so and advise you to also, if yours are not newer, you don't need a vacuum leak. So if they tear, take them apart, don't panic. They're really not that expensive. I advise you to buy good quality German ones, though. One thing to do is down inside here, see that nut that holds the intake down. Loosen that up. You can get to it through here with a 13 millimeter, okay? Once that's loosened up, the intake will move around and give you play to get the end cast off. There we go. stupid rubber was holding it. There we go. Should have never been that hard. Save these clamps. These are really, really nice clamps. I like them. They're better than the ones with the slots all the way around. So, do that. Okay, let's get 13s. Oh, 
off the ends. I'm using a quarter inch ratchet, so that's why it's a little harder, which is fine. All right. Take the extension off. See if this one will reach. Some washer and washer. Let's get them screws loose. have been on here a long time. got to take the alternator strap loose that holds it to the generator or alternator stand. There's a bolt right down there. It's 13 millimeter. You can only kind of see it looking through there. I'm going to see with this pushed back, I should be able to get the wrench on there, as you can see, and take it off. You want that loosened away from the generator stand, just or the alternator stand. To slide the bracket back, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. As you see, that's the strap to the alternator, and it holds it to the stand. So you gotta slide it back so you'll be able to lift the fan shroud up. So let's do that. So just grab a hold of it and slide it to the back. That way you'll show, I'll show you when I'm done what I mean. It's not holding to the stand now. So that's a good thing. You have a 10 millimeter bolt holding the fan shroud down to the cylinder head tins. Take that out. I'm gonna leave that partially in because it's slotted. It'll pull up and out. Okay, there's another one on this side which wasn't even in there. So somebody removed it at one point. I really don't know why, but always make sure you put all these screws back in. Okay, we've got to take our nut off of the generator. I keep saying that, it's an alternator. I've owned a lot of generators, I guess you could tell. Put your screwdriver in a slot to hold it. So don't move. I'm going to use a gun because I feel like cheating. Okay. Now you have shims behind here, and we'll go over that later. I'll show you later how to adjust the belt. There's all the shims. Okay. I'm going to put this back on just for right now. It helps me drop it. Make sure you drop it first, always. Helps me from having parts all over the place. So, always buy a new belt and always carry a spare one. I'm gonna do a video on what to carry in your car with you. That way you don't need to have AAA all the time, although it's good to have them. Okay, looking around, I believe we got everything disconnected. We are going to lift the fan shroud off. Gotta disconnect some of the linkage back here. I removed the bolt from here, which held this in place. Let's take the spring off. That, that's your flaps. That's the flaps that work back and forth with the thermostat. Okay, this is going to hit right here on the oil cooler. So I need to remove this clip. There it is. Don't lose those. Okay. That'll come up around here. I believe the fan shroud will just pull off now. Yeah, that rod 
There we go. I'll show you something here in a minute. This is what goes down. And when you remember me threading the thermostat off, it hooks up to this. And that's what pulls these flaps open and closed to cool the head. When it goes up, it's opening up and the air comes down to the heads. But until the car warms up, they technically stay closed. But that's what that is. What I was talking about with the alternator, that strap that I had to loosen up, it hooks underneath the alternator stand and holds it down. So that's why you have to slide that back and then the shroud will pull up. So obviously now the intake just comes off. The screwdriver go. We'll see if these screws come right out. I doubt it. Okay, I'm glad it didn't because I'll show you what I did. Take a pair of vice grips snap it on and then they loosen. Give it a couple turns back and forth though. Okay. This one's broke off there. What I'm going to do, because I don't like these screws, see, they start rounding out. I'm going to take one of them with me to Ace Hardware or whatever hardware store you have by you and instead of screws get little bolts but make sure you get them the same thread pitch because they thread into the heads and get them the same exact length and i'll probably have a 10 millimeter bolt head on them so you're better off doing that to be honest with you instead of messing with these screws later put little bolts in there it'll make life much simpler when you got to take it apart again and what i highly advise with these and i highly advise it when you put the new bolts in, use copper high heat anti-seize. And it'll always come out. Okay, got it. Let's see if these fight with me. Okay. Trust me though, put little bolts back in with some anti-seize on them. Make sure you use the high heat anti-seize. Okay. Make sure you keep all these cooling tins on when you put them back on. If not, you'll be running hot and wonder why. So keep them in place where they're supposed to be. There we go. One tin off. You don't get a bunch of crap in your heads, but I'm pulling these heads off so it doesn't matter. There's your other cylinder head tin. All right. Next, we'll be removing the rocker arms, the heads, the pistons. I'm going to pop the generator stand real quick. Alternator. I keep saying generator. And get that out of the way. Let's get the alternator stand off. Let's get it out of the way. Fuel pump already had the bolts off, so. So I was checking something, so that's why it was off. Oh, they had it on right. As you can see in the photo here, this is how this is supposed to go on. This is really clumped up. Wow. Jeez, this motor's dirty. That should not be clumped up like that. I'll get it all cleaned. Like I showed you in the photo, that's the direction it goes. So make sure you put it back on the right way.
I'm gonna leave that on for right now though to keep some stuff out of there. So, 13 millimeter nuts on the rocker arms. Slide your rocker arm off. Whoa. Okay, nothing to it. That's obviously the adjusters, 13 millimeter and a screwdriver in the middle for adjusting your rocker arms. Adjusting valves, so to speak. Right now, I'm just gonna put these nuts on here because I have too many nuts and bolts flying around. Okay, take the push rods out, keep them in order. Some people like to, I'm going to. So keep them in order and then write down, you know, if you want to, you know, passenger side or three, four, number three, four. Okay, we are going to take the head off of this side. There's a lot of crap on this thing. Wow. So I kind of do crisscross taking them off. You probably don't have to, but I do. Let's see how hard it is to get this head off now. I might need a rubber mallet, not sure. Of course, wait. Double check. Everything. Don't beat your tins up. Should have this on the engine stand. Pull towards you while you're doing that. Here it comes. Whoops. Push rod tube fell out. Pulling the engine towards me. I'm gonna have to get this on the stand. The pistons are coming out with it. Where are the cylinder head? It's stuck in it, which I kind of expected that. I'm not, oh, busted the one fin. I'm not using these pistons. Come on, there we go. Okay. Don't forget this heat shield's important. It snaps up between number three and four. So don't forget to put that back on. Okay. There's the other jug. All right, we're not reusing these. It didn't look that bad. really didn't look too too bad but as cheap as pistons are better off putting new ones on anyhow oh number three there's a surprise huh okay let's go to the other side I keep these nuts stuff on there just so I guess where that went It is. Come with that going inside the motor, huh? That has caused some complications. Okay, let's loosen this head up. And I believe that's it. I know it's not gonna just come right off, so. Should 
could have put this on the stand. My fault. It's moving slowly. Remember, don't break your fins. piston cylinders coming with it on this side. Okay. Your other tin on that side. Make sure you put it underneath. You'll be seeing me when I put that together anyhow, so. All right. I'm just gonna take this tin off here. We gotta get this jug off. Yeah, they weren't that great. Okay, we're gonna take the pistons off now. Now what you gotta do, right in here there's a snap ring. Take a pair of needle noses. They come right out, okay? There's one on each side. Take that one out. Get something that seats inside of here, like that. And you're gonna knock the wrist pin out. Right out. in there. I'm changing the pistons anyhow, so no big deal. They've probably just been in there a long time. So give a few twists and out it comes and get your socket back out of there. And there comes your piston. The piston was hung up. You're gonna turn it till this one's out and then do the same thing until you get all the pistons off. Okay, this will look right up and off. There's black ones on here, so I gotta see if I have black. They take, wow, these ones are hard as rock. And then this comes off like that. I wanna flush and clean it all out, so. But, oops. I like to put stuff back together. Try to spin some nuts and bolts back on just so you don't lose your stuff. There's the rings right there. You don't want them to leak or you will have an issue, okay? Okay, I do not have a 28 millimeter socket. I must have lined it out at one point or something. I put the flywheel lock on the other end, lock the flywheel in place, I threw it on real quick and I'm just using a crescent wrench to break this loose. Like that. Now, I don't know how hard this will be to get off. Sometimes they come right off, sometimes they don't, and I don't have a puller. So hopefully, no, no, it ain't gonna come right off. Of course not, because that's my life. Here we go. Everything still looks good. 
We'll clean this pulley up real nice. There's your top dead center. There's your timing degree. Okay, I gotta take these tins off here. I doubt if this will just come right out. Heck no. Why would it? And that's why I'll be putting bolts back in. That's the reason. Okay, that side's loose. And let's see. And we want to. Oh man, really? I want to clean these all up and paint them real nice because that's what you should do if you want it to look good people will cheer you on okay that one's loose can always straighten these back up ain't a big deal See? So you do. There's your oil pump. This is for a semi automatic stick. See the fitting coming off of it? They're different. So I will put the 26 millimeter pump on here as long as this is a dished cam, and I believe it probably is because it's an AH. So, we're going to clean this block up real nice. People will be mentioning how great it is. Be at the car shows with the hood up or the deck lid. So, I guess Beatles. Park backwards at the Porsche. Very awkward, huh? Okay. So, as you remember the last video, we got to loosen right here. We gotta relieve the pressure off the case. You have a bolt and nut there, and then a nut here. Kind of relieves the pressure the case has. Okay. that. My hands are too slippery. There's that. This has been on there a while. I can tell. My head's probably in your way, isn't it? Let me give it a little tap. A little tap. My head's in your way again, sorry. Don't be rough on it. Just a little bit at a time. There you go. And that's a dish cam. So I'll use my 26 millimeter oil pump. We're going to get this all cleaned up though first. I'll shove rags in all the holes and clean the block real pretty. Okay, 
So, I'm looking around because I'm not splitting the case on this particular engine. I don't need to, but I am going to do it on another one. And you'll get to see that when I do a complete rebuild. So, that's pretty much what I'm taking off of this. Uh, the only thing left would be to split the case and change the bearings and the cam, which I just don't need to do that on this motor, so there's no point in taking this one apart. Not a good engine. I don't want to do that to it. It's a waste of money and time, but that's okay, because I'll be doing the other one before you know it, and you'll get to enjoy me doing that. I don't know enjoy, but you know, just want to snug them back up for right now. Okay, so we disassembled the second engine. That is the good engine, for except the pistons and that. On the other engine, I have brand new pistons to put on, really nice quality heads, but I am going to do a video, probably next, on cleaning and lapping the valves. So you'll see how that's done, and it's a good thing to do. You want them to seat properly. Uh, everything's off of this motor. I'll be splitting the case on the next engine and doing a total rebuild, but for let, right now, let's get this on the road. So. You'll be seeing me lap the valves next in a video, and then a video after, you'll be watching the assembly of this engine and see it coming together. We've been a long way. If you remember when I got Gracie nine, ten months ago, I can't remember, this is what she looked like. And of course, we've come a long way in a short amount of time. I'm really happy. But I kept on it over the winter and kept moving. Please subscribe, like, and share if you're already subscribed here. Thank you so much. And have yourself a great one.